Hello beautiful people, welcome back. A quick way to know that everything that occurs when someone's image is taken, whether it's for civil or criminal claims, a quick way to know that it is a commercial activity is by the term they use itself. They use the word booking. Booking is a process where information about a criminal suspect is entered into the system of a police station or jail after the person's arrest. Regardless of whether this was this arrest was done lawfully or not, they still do this nonetheless. Why? Because of monies. At the top right of all that CABS unit report in the NCIC, the rap sheet information that they share, there's always a barcode. And they always act as agencies. It says it on his face. And this word bookkeeping and booking, same thing. They're making a bookkeeping of the people that they are trading by acting as agency of the state. Exact procedures may vary among jurisdictions, but most share similar features. Generally, police will gather fingerprints, photograph called mugshot, and personal information including the crime the person is alleged to have committed. Further, police search through database to see if the suspect has outstanding warrants. That's all the information that they share. The state police, the FBI, all the alphabet boys. And they transfer that information. And that's one of the claims that one can bring against them when it comes to defamation. One of the elements of defamation is unprivileged sharing of information. In short, this thing called booking that they do when they arrest someone. It's the same thing as bookkeeping. Just all those mug shots, all the fingerprints, and all the other biometric data that they share amongst agencies have monetary value. The first clue for you to know that there's monetary value to that, besides the barcode on it, it's the term that they call it itself, called booking. Booking and bookkeeping, same thing. So what is bookkeeping? Bookkeeping versus accounting, what is the difference? Bookkeeping, distinction between accounting and bookkeeping are subtle yet essential. Essential, meaning their core, it's the same thing. The distinction between accounting and bookkeeping are subtle yet essential when considering a career in either field. Bookkeeping record, bookkeepers record the day-to-day -day financial transaction of a business. That book and record, your image, your fingerprint, your information, barcode, the statutes. Now remember, all statutes have statutes of limitation. And the expiration date of those statutes are the day that the maturity bond attached to each statute mature. And those statutes are what they attach to the cabs month shot that they share amongst themselves as agencies of the state. That booking information is a record of the day-to-day -day financial transaction of a business and according to the rule of evidence, Rule 803, exception to rules against hearsay, meaning certain information that exists that are not hearsay. Those day-to-day -day financial transactions are part of exceptions of hearsay. The following are not excluded by the rule against hearsay, regardless of whether the declarant is available as a witness. Meaning that employee called police officer so-and-so with their employee number, aka badge number, aka star number, whatever. Regardless of whether they're there during that court date, after they've attached some monetary value to you being held as a surety against some presumption that you are left with the burden, the undue burden of dealing with on the judicial and commercial level, regardless of whether they're present or not, it is admissible as hearsay because it falls under exceptions. Because those mug shots that has that statute that they say you supposedly violated. Now they've attached your face and your image to it 
and your character is defamed based on rule 403 character evidence which has its own standards or whatnot and they share that information which should be unprivileged if you know what you're doing all that is an exception against hearsay because it's a day-to-day -day financial transaction of a business entity the following are not excluded by the rule against hearsay regardless of whether the declarant is available as a witness 6 b the record was kept in the course of a regularly conducted activity of a business just like we've read the definition of bookkeeping and accounting and how all this is commerce the record was kept in the course of regularly conducted activity of a business organization occupation or calling whether or not for profit Making the record was a regular practice of that activity. It's a regular practice that whenever someone is charged with something, the process of being charged itself involves taking your biometric data, your personal confidential information, and attach a monetary value to it, transferring it and selling it, and then using a cloud of legality based on the quasi-judicial structure, either in a county or in a state local or on a federal level to say we have the right to do this against you and now you must prove yourself innocent because they know most people don't do something called affirmative defense see that thing called presumption of innocence before guilt is not a presumption presumption of innocence before guilt only exists when something triggers it and the only thing that triggers that thing called presumption of innocence is when an affirmative defense is done if you don't do your affirmative defense that presumption of innocence does not trigger. It has to be triggered by something. So that's that. But these bookkeeping that they do every day with people is a regularly conducted business activity that falls under exceptions of hearsay. In other words, they consider it as being admissible as evidence against you. That is why presumption of innocence does not predominate anything. What predominates presumption of innocence is your ability and your capacity to do an affirmative defense, which triggers the presumption of innocence. But moving on. So you see now how commerce is directly incorporated into the proceedings on judicial levels, which they use on a quasi-judicial level against you based on evidence all these things they're doing against you are not just some rigmarole they just go through just to go through it they are they are using the rules of evidence against you from the moment that they interact with you before they even begin to interact with you and guess what those same evidence can be used to your benefit against them because it's a double-edged sword if you've ever seen the lady justice in the past it used to be a scimitar but a modern time when the change of hands occurred, based on the cycles of the cosmos, became a double-edged sword, meaning it can fall on anyone at any moment. But if one does not know how commerce interplay with judicial aspect, how they can then begin to really fix it? Merely hearing that everything is commerce and that the court is commerce is not enough. Do you actually know how it all interrelates? Do you know how it makes basic common sense? Do you know how it's written within the language and the structure of one, commerce itself, and two, that quasi-judicial cloud that they use to enforce commercial activities against you? We just read the rule of evidence that speaks about business activities. We just read, read the rule of evidence that speaks about profit or not. We just read the rule of evidence that speaks about occupation, any business. And before then, we read things regarding accounting and bookkeeping. And the fact that they go through this process called booking, they tell you. They don't hide these things from you. It's not as mysterious as someone will sit there for hours and hours speaking about something in a mysterious, clouded manner just so you can learn nothing from it and know not how it really relates to anything. And at the end, you're just filled with a bunch of emotions. You're upset. But now, where is it in black and white that you can put to use as a WS sword against them? Or better yet, how do you really comprehend 
how it's used against you when it comes to the dynamics. It's been shown to you. Just don't get your feelings involved. Get the part of your mind. See, feeling is just an electrical impulse. It's pure fire. Now, let that pure fire be directed by your practical and functional knowledge of how it actually works, how the puzzle piece fits. See now how slavery in modern time, how it occurs? For bookkeepers, there are a lot of minutia is involved. And keen attention to details paramount. Meanwhile, accountant tends to use the bookkeeper's input to create financial statement and periodically review them and analyze the financial information recorded by bookkeepers. They conduct audits and forecast futures business needs. Men, once the bookkeeper has outlined the day-to-day -day financial transactions, which is the monetary value of the statute attached to that CAFR account that they're tapping into, then I'll take it to their accountant to see how much money they can make off of it as much as possible. Like anyone would do in a business, your expense and your income and amount, you know, you have a bookkeeping service for that. And once your bookkeeper organizes that in a sensible manner, you then give it to your CPA, a certified public accountant, so that they can do your deductions, your discharge, amortization, all that. All the same principle apply with municipalities and the products that are being traded are the everyday man and woman. And if it's not the everyday man and woman, then there's a presumption that the everyday man and woman are held as surety against the performance of the things and the issues that they bring up and attach to you and everyone else. You ever had that mugshot taken? Go ahead and look at the cab's report. There's always a barcode. Go ahead and look at the bottom. There's always a statute attached to it. Go ahead and look deeper into the details. Do a freedom of information or freedom of information law on it. And you will see that they have agency number. Even if it's through the court system, they have an agency number and they identify themselves as the agency of the state. The question here is, what are they doing with all those information? And how many parties are involved? These are things you need to consider if you say you really want to be private. The parties that are involved with all those systems that were mentioned in the earlier portion of these videos are probably some of the parties that you need to start removing those information from and put into consideration the monetary value involved when it comes to coming in with trust and actually preserving the interest that's attached to the presumption that you're assured on a commercial level. Say hey, if you've yet to join my Patreon page, I'm inviting you to come on over. Over there we'll speak about many things we do not and cannot speak of here on YouTube. Uh, take a look at it. It's self-explanatory. Child support, other court-related matters, trust, tort, and discharge, uh, suits, etc., etc. Take a look at it. Come on over and join us. Until next time, take care. Best of luck.